Despite the pandemic lockdown and stay at home orders, millions of people are eager to get back out onto the waterways. Some did. Ski dues and sea dues. The earnings report from BRP actually shows a lot of us want to go have some fun. Let's bring into the stream right now the president and chief executive officer from BRP, Jose Boisrelli. It's good to have you here. And we also have Julia LaRoche, who's going to grill you on the earnings. But I want to ask you about this. You're going to go all electric in, I think it's about five years. Does that mean no more gas powered ski dues or sea dues? No, 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 absolutely not. Uh, you know, our company have been in business for more than 50 years and we evolved from two-stroke technology to four-stroke, four-stroke supercharged turbo. And now we're going in the next era with the uh, electrification of our product, but that will be, uh, we will, first product will hit the market in two years. We committed to deliver the eight product line within five years. And it will be an evolution. Uh, we believe some customer will be very happy of having new, that new type of product, but some will remain with combustion engine and we're ready to, to, to deliver both uh, a new experience and both to our customers. Jose, it's Julia LaRoche, and I want to talk about um, the year that you all had and the, the strong demand from customers, especially in the uh, fourth quarter, particularly, and you were talking about I guess for the full year it was, um, the new entrance into um, your product lines, 30% uh, new entrance for your customers up from 20%. How um, much longer do you think this kind of demand will continue post vaccine when folks start to go back to kind of the normal life in the office? Yeah, uh, we don't know yet what will be, we call it now the next normal, I think. Uh, you know, <clears throat> when we entered the pandemic, we saw that staycation phenomena and we were surprised by the surge in demand. And we're not expert in that field, but now more and more people that they believe that before traveling, go back to normal or vacation in Europe with your family, uh, it will take another two to four years. Then for us, uh, some see that as negatively, but we see that as very positively because right now we have that surge of new entrants in our business that are happy with their product. And we believe that we have a very good chance to convert them to lifelong customers. Then we don't think it's only a one year thing. We think it could go for another few years and it's our job to make the best out of it. Jose, you were able to meet a lot of this jump in demand here, even with a temporary suspension of your operations due to the pandemic. How did you manage to minimize the impact on your revenues? I mean, last year we uh, were shut down for two months. Then we operated 10 months out of 12 and we've delivered about 6 billion of uh, sales. Um, next year, this year that we are in, that we starting, we, I mean, obviously we're planning to work for 12 months and uh, we, our guidance was about 7.5 billion in sales. I have to admit, uh, every day it's a, a challenge. Uh, we always have uh, dif difficulty with ports or uh, a ports of LA of Seattle or supply chain. But this is our job to make sure that our factory are running and we always find ways to, uh, to, uh, to make things happen. I mean, you all heard about the boat that is uh, squeezed in the uh, canal of Suez uh, in, 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 and, and right now we have a few boats that were behind that boat. And right now we have fretting component from Asia to our factory to keep the factory running. Then it's a daily challenge. We had some interruption last year, but little. And we planning to uh, continue on that pace uh, for fiscal year 22. Uh Jose, can we, can we talk a little bit about that? You just referenced the, the Suez Canal and how you all are kind of thinking about your operations. I think a lot of viewers would love to hear from someone in your position. Um, how are you monitoring the situation and, and adapting to it? And what are you kind of hearing? I mean, we have first, we've been running uh, our 11 factory just in time forever. That means we have some component, maybe one week of inventory, others a few hours of inventory. Then we are used to be very agile to adapt and react very quickly uh, to any situation. Then this is our day-to-day -day life. Obviously, with the surge in demand and with the difficulty in the worldwide supply chain, 
the level of difficulty at another level. Then basically we're monitoring our supplier on a weekly basis and the one that are of more difficulty on a daily basis. And we have a team, a SWAT team that uh, is helping them to uh, find solution when they have a problem. And we have some difficulty here and there, but overall we are able to keep the factory running. And again, using sometimes half freight instead of both or using a specialized team of expert helping the supplier to find solution with raw material or changing that plastic for that plastic for a period of time being accepted by engineering, then this, this is what we're doing. And so far it's working. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's working. And, and you're also planning for the future with the Electric Vehicle Development Center um, you know, in Canada, but I'm curious, how go your efforts to recruit the kinds of people you need for the EV team? Yeah, right now <clears throat> we have two poles of expertise. We have one here in Canada will focus on the energy, the battery pack, and the, the starter for the, the charger for the vehicle. And we have another pole in Austria uh, for the, uh, we call it the, the torque, the torque side with the inverter and other component, the, the electric motors. And we are recruiting uh, in Canada and also in Europe and trying to bring the best uh, to our program. We intend to hire 160 people over the next 18 months. That's a big task. But you know, that's one of the reasons why we unveil more detail on our plan yesterday because we felt that we were due to inform our customer, our dealer about our intent, but also to attract those talent to our business because we building fun product. And when you are uh, into the industry, uh, I can assure you it's a challenging, but it's, it's a fun business to be in. And uh, so far, uh, we intend to have 110 of those 160 sure. here in Canada and the other, uh, the other 50 uh, in Europe. But depending how we'll find, we will adjust. But this is the sure. plan for now. Jose Bocelli, thank you so much for joining us, the President and Chief Executive Officer from BRP. And it's always good to see you, Julia LaRoe.